Hey everyone, Brett Kelly here for another Tuesday Tech Tip. Uh, today we're talking about the cloud, the cloud, cloud, cloud. Um, cloud's nothing new, cloud's part of our lives now. We always talked about it like it's the future, but the future's here. So what I want to talk about, what exactly is the cloud? Is the cloud gonna make on-prem storage go away? Are we gonna do both? What's going on there? Okay, so the cloud, um, it's not even that new of a term anymore. Everyone knows about the cloud. The cloud is so ingrained in our lives now. But for those who don't know, and I am going to stay very general throughout this video, the cloud is pretty much just instead of you having servers that you control, that you work on your server rack, they're somewhere else managed by someone else, and you just access via HTTP. That's essentially what the cloud is. But for the, from that, I kind of want to split it into two groups, and I'm really going to talk about one. Cloud compute, cloud storage. Cloud compute is a great idea. Cloud compute, you can imagine uh, all your web servers, all your uh, services that connect to the outside world. Web servers really comes to mind. It makes sense to put that onto Amazon's in infrastructure or someone else's infrastructure. Just get it out of your site. It's spread around the world, content distribution networks, all that fun stuff. And now cloud storage. Cloud storage doesn't make as much sense as cloud compute. Um, I'd almost say besides privacy reasons, always put your compute servers into the cloud. Storage, maybe not so much. Why? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is bandwidth. Uh, for that same reason that makes cloud so convenient, where you get access to everything through just an internet connection, you don't have to host anything on, your, on site. Um, the flip side of that is you're limited by the bandwidth of your internet connection. If you're a video editing shop or, or, or even video surveillance um, or anything that requires a good amount of bandwidth in and out of your storage, you're not going to be able to do work out of live data out of the cloud. It's just not going to work. You have too small of a bandwidth coming in through your internet. And really the second other point that comes to mind is the economics of the cost. Uh, at first glance, it seems like it's a great idea. Most places are what like sub cents, like half a cent per, per gigabyte. Uh, I think that's Backblaze and they're all around there, right? So. That's great. You can kind of compare that numbers and a lot of people will take that storage amount and compare that to the cost of putting something on prem. But then you don't realize that you got to factor in the cost of your internet. Like I said earlier, if you want that high bandwidth, you're going to have to pay. And two, to re it, that's usually just the cost to store the files. If you ever really look at your, your reading pattern, how much you actually read back down, you have to pay for that separately from the storage thing. So uh, sto from the storage cost. So those are kind of my two reasons why you should just not automatically dive right into cloud storage. My point isn't to say don't use cloud storage, only use prem, on-prem or vice versa. My point is just be aware that on-prem storage really won't go away. Um, you're going to want to use both. You're going to want to have your storage with the option of batching it off and sending it out to an Amazon cloud or Wasabi or Backblaze, any of the big vendors. Maybe you spun your own Ceph S3 cluster back in your main headquarters and you just have an on-prem video post server. Like, yeah, say you're shooting film out in the middle of the jungle somewhere, so you bring a storage server down because you need the bandwidth, but you need to send it back home. Well, don't, don't use tapes. Don't take the hard drives and mail them. Sync up to the cloud. Send it through the internet connection. So. The cloud isn't going to take over the world. It's the hybrid cloud that's going to take over the world. And now there's another buzzword you probably hear all the time. But what it is, is just a combination of keep some of your storage here and keep the rest of it up there. So fun fact, um, you don't have to use the big vendors cloud services. You want to build your own? Well, that's where S3 comes in. Um, S3 is more than just Amazon's services. S3 is a protocol. It stands for simple storage service. Um, as you might know, POSIX compliant for traditional file systems. If, if, if an application or if something's POSIX compliant, you know it'll work with a POSIX compliant uh, file system. Well, the same thing with S3 now. Vendors and applications are writing programs, writing things that are S3 compliant. Now, usually that is meant for Amazon, but other uh, software packages, other vendors are authoring their own way and abstracting this S3 layer on top. So when I say, do you want to build your own cloud? Uh, spin up a Ceph cluster, turn on the RGW gateways, export your buckets with S3. Guess what? You've got your own public, publicly accessible cloud. You want FreeNAS? 
throw Minio service on top of it. That'll export one of your data sets as S3. That is essentially a do-it-yourself little cloud. What's really cool about what's going on here is the cloud isn't necessarily going to be locked down by the big vendors. Now, yes, they'll have the infrastructure to like kind of spread your stuff around the world, but if you need your own little on-prem cloud, you can do it with Ceph, you can do it with Minio, you can do it with anything. It's, it's, it's the new positive compliant S3. All right, so that's this week's tech tip. I hope you enjoyed, hope you learned anything. If you have an opinion, you think I'm wrong, you think I'm right, let me know in the, in the comments below, social media, any of them. Uh, we'd love to hear you. New ideas, as always, we'd love to hear you. Um, yeah, have a good week.